If you try buying brake pads recently, it's a nightmare. Stick around, I'll give you some tips. When it comes to pads for rim brakes, we don't hesitate in trying alternative brands out. However, when it comes to the pads for disc, a lot of us tend to just replace with the pad that the bike came with. Why do we do that? I think there's two reasons. First of all, it's hard to tell visually one pad from the other. And the other thing is, well, when you look at the packaging or the website, it's about as clear as mud as to what pad works with what caliper. So what people are doing is they're thinking, well, I know the one that's on the bike is the right one, so I'll just buy those again. So people are buying the same stock Shimano pads over and over again. Now I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. The latest ones, the Shimano 05s, they're a great set of pads. Work well and super reliable. However, have you tried buying a set of these at the moment? These things are a nightmare to get hold of. Before making this video, I went on Sigma, Wiggle CRC, and Merlin. This one, the L05, which is the standard one that comes with most bikes, you can't buy these for love nor money. These things are super rare at the moment. Stick a comment down below how much you'll give me for them. When these pads are available, they are £25 a pair. I can buy a set of brake pads for my car for that and still have money left over for a pint of beer. Now this problem's not a new thing. This has been going on now for three years. Shimano stock has been a nightmare for three years. So what we're seeing is when you just can't get these anywhere, People are either not using their bikes, believe it or not, I've heard of people that just have stopped riding their bikes because they can't get these pads, or they're going on places like Amazon or eBay, and I've been seeing these sell recently for £50 a pair. Absolutely crazy. Now what if I told you there was an alternative pad that works just as well as these do, but cost a third of the price? Well, stick around, I'm going to do exactly that. Now I need you to do me a favour. I've had a few comments saying that the audio uh, on my videos is a little bit low and a little bit quiet, so I've invested in a whole new microphone, some all singing, all dancing, wireless bit of kit. Um, do me a favour, put a comment below. If you think the video is really, really quiet, then moving forward, what I'll do is I'll crank the audio up um, in the edit. But yeah, just stick a comment below and let me know, will you? Thanks. Right, okay, so, brake pads. So I'm gonna have a quick look at some alternative brake pads, alternative Shimano, and I'm gonna compare them and see how they compare against the box standard ones. And what, okay, so what do we care about when it comes down to brake pads? We care about uh, performance and reliability. That's one of the things we care about. Uh, we care about how long they last, and we care about how much they cost. So those are the key, the three things we're gonna look at when looking at these brake pads. Okay, right, so let's crack on. Okay, so the first ones we're gonna look at is a small brand called Gorilla. Who is Gorilla? Gorilla is say, a small company and they're based in the northwest of England. And in this envelope, should be, <laughs> it's came in the post the other day, in this envelope should be their equivalent, shall we say, to the Shimano LO pad. This particular one, that's, an, that's a really old one. Uh, it's an LO2. You've got the LO3 and the LO4, and now the latest variant, as I was showing you earlier, the LO5. And these pads uh, are, sh are Gorilla's alternative to that pad. I'm going to have a closer look at those. There you go. Now, the first obvious thing you'll notice when you compare those pads to those pads is that these pads don't have a heat sink on them. Now, does that matter? No, it doesn't matter. I have seen no performance difference between using a pad without a heat sink to one with. Now, I have never known a brake pad to overheat. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? Maybe if you're 30 stone and you're descending down Von 2 on a very sunny day, you might overheat one. But, all joking aside, I've never known them to overheat. That Some would say that a pad 
can boil the brake fluid. In this particular instance, that's not possible. I won't bore you with the details why, but in, the, in the, this particular environment of these types of brakes, that isn't possible. So what about performance? I have seen absolutely no difference in braking performance when using these pads to when using these. The only difference I have ever noticed between them is aesthetically they're slightly different. It doesn't really, you don't really notice it once it's, it's bolted in yet, yeah, you've got a little bit of heat sink showing on this one, but <laughs> genuinely that is the only difference I've noticed between using these pads and these. So I suppose the next question, if the performance is exactly the same, what's the durability like? Do these last as long as these? So let's take a look at that now. Okay, so let's look at wear levels. How long do these alternative pads last? Do they last as long? Right, so the best way to, to find out how they're wearing is to get one and measure it. So first of all, as a control, that is a Shimano pad and there is its size. Give or take a bit, a stock Shimano pad is four mil thick. So let's get a Gorilla pad, just so we know, and see how thick one of those is. Using trusty vernier gauge, give or take a tiny little bit, four mil. Right, now let's measure one that's been on the bike a while. Now here is a Gorilla pad that has been on this winter bike on the front for over 1,300 miles. And as I say, it's on the front and it's a winter bike. So that pad will literally snot it up and is getting a lot of abuse. And let's measure that. 3.7. So that, in my opinion, is doing very, very well indeed. It has lost 0.3 in over 1300 miles. So that wear wise is exceptional. Now I will admit that that you'll notice is a different color because that particular pad, the pad is a, a, a variant, a slightly harder uh, version of the sta standard stock pad, but it gives you some indication of how this brand is doing wear-wise. So as far as I'm concerned, wear levels, amazing. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a Shimano one to hand that's done exactly the same miles to measure, unfortunately. So the next thing is the price. So as we were saying earlier, those Shimanos that you're lucky enough, if you can find a set, they will cost you 25 pounds, roughly a pair. The Gorilla equivalent, they will cost you roughly seven pounds a pair. So they cost a third of those. You can get three pairs of those for every one pair of those. That's if you're lucky enough to actually find a shop you can buy them in. Now, if you found this content useful and I've given you some information that's helped you out, do me a favor, help me out, hit that like button. It makes a massive difference to the channel. So the whole idea of uh, my channel is to share my knowledge and my experience, but it's also for you to share your knowledge and your experience. If you've found an alternative pad or you've found an alternative product that works really, really well, put a comment below, share the knowledge, tell other people what you're using, tell us what pads you've used and what your experience has been. If you've had an experience with the Gorilla pads, let us know. If you've had any experience with any other pads and you found them to be fantastic or disastrous, do everyone else a favor let us know. Right, okay, so on to the next brand. The next brand is a company called Noah and Theo. And they are, once again, they're a small uh, UK company uh, based in Kent, I think. I'll put a link in the description below to their website. Now, what I was gonna do was I was gonna take the pads off of my summer bike, because I use Noah and Theo on my summer bike. I was gonna take the pads off there and do a comparison with those as well. But it would be really, really boring because the result is exactly the same. Those Noah and Theo pads 
I've already measured them, checked it all. The wear level is exactly the same. To look at the product, it's exactly the same. Now I'm not suggesting for one second they are exactly the same product. But what I'm saying is, for me as a user of them, my experience is exactly the same. So it would make the video very, very boring if I then sat there and got the vernier gauge out and measured them and did all that and the other. So what I'm basically saying here is they're the same. And they also offer various compounds and their prices are also very similar. I think the Noah and Theo for the basic one, there's roughly a pound in it, but you know what, it's a pound. So yeah, so Noah and Theo, link in the description below, check those guys out as well, because they are doing a very, very similar product to the Gorilla Pad. Right, okay, so on to the next one, and it's actually a Shimano pad that not many road users even use. So Shimano also makes a pad like this that's non-finned. Shimano makes a non-finned pad that works with 105, Ultegra and Dura Ace. It fits straight in. It is the K0. Now, not a lot of people realize that Shimano makes these, so you can very easily buy those in the shops. I've seen those on Wiggle, I've seen them on Merlin, and I've seen them on Sigma, and they're roughly 11 pound a pair. So, if you really want to stick with Shimano as a, as a brand, then you can, and you cannot get hold of the L0 range, then check out the K0 range, because they're exactly the same, but they haven't got the fin on the top. Now, if you're looking to replace the pads on your bike, you should check out this video, my top 10 workshop tools. And if you're giving your bike the once over spring clean facelift, check out that video down there. That's my video on how quick and easy it is to replace the bar tape on your bike. Thanks for watching.